Welcome back to Old School Sports and our OOTP 23 playthrough of the Kansas City Royals. Uh, we're in early 2036, um, doing some final preparations for the season. Uh, the preseason began today. Um, since our last episode, even though it was only a day away, uh, we did continue doing a few things. Um, most notably, um, we've been playing around with our minor league system a lot, and we did um, make one trade. We traded away Ishmael Zavala, uh, another one of our excess outfielders, um, who you can see was up with the Royals a bit in 2034, but spent all of last year in Omaha, where he had a uh, respectable season. But at 28 years old, um, just didn't have a long-term future with us. Uh, we got first baseman David Powell, um, who is a decent hitting prospect, I guess, at first base. Um, doesn't really have a defensive position. He plays first, but uh, he's not really capable of playing the outfield or anywhere else in the infield. So he's a first base slash D DH. Um, don't see him being a um, major league player for us unless we have a lot of injuries, but he does have two option years left. So that's why we brought him on. And then the rest of the players we were able to get were really just minor league depth. I don't think any of them are going to ever have any impact at the major league level. But um, if you've been watching us, we know to like kind of have, you probably know that we like to kind of have everyone in our system having some type of purpose and these players all have good personalities and we needed some players um, to kind of start rounding out our minor league teams for this upcoming season. So we picked up Tony Maldonado, a 23 year old pitcher with good work ethic and low greed, unlikely to be a major leaguer. Third baseman Manny Avios, definitely not a major leaguer, but he's high in intelligence. Uh, right uh, relief pitcher Jesus Avia, who's also got high work ethic. Um, you can see he's definitely not going to be a major leaguer. And last but not least, another pitcher, Lissendri Mirzaku, uh, who's low on greed. Um, definitely not going to be a major league pitcher. So we just got bodies for some of our minor league teams who are going to be hopefully positive and at the very least neutral influences on the players around them that uh, some of whom hopefully are going to be on our major league team someday. Uh, so that was really all we did. We did also make a trade offer. I realized, and uh, some of you who were looking closely might have realized this, that we declined the team option that we had on Min Ho Choi. But because last year was his first year in the majors, um, he was technically um, still under contract with us um, at $5 million. So that's good because we were going to be paying him $6 million if we hadn't opted out of the contract. But he was kind of so meh last year that um, we just made an offer to try to get rid of him um, to get um, the $5 million off of the books and uh, get a few prospects. No exciting prospects, more just bodies in return. And if we are able to complete that trade, then that'll open up even some more money for us. Um, at this point, there's not too much left on the free agent market. Uh, you can see there's only one player who's theoretically above three stars, according to our scout. And he's out for six months with a torn elbow ligament. Um, there's a you know fair number of three-star players out there. And then the rest of the free agents at this point are really replacement-level type players, which sadly includes our former ace, Spencer Bauer, who's uh, wrecked physically and looking for $9 million. Hasn't been able to find it so far. Uh, so really just two big free agent signings for us this year. Uh, closer Santiago Suarez and left-handed reliever Gabe Pryor. And between the Rule 5 draft and a uh, few trades, we've also added some other arms into our bullpen and also brought on a third catcher to our 40-man roster. So I think the big activities for this offseason are done. You can see we've made a number of offers of minor league contracts to players for organizational depth. 
as we kind of try to build out our minor league system. You can see we definitely need some players at the double-A, triple-A, and even high-A level. Still have plenty of guys at the lower levels of the minors at this point, but um, going to hopefully add a few more players for the minors over the coming weeks and uh, start getting ready for the regular season. And our uh, offer of Choi was to the Twins. We can see that um, they didn't accept that offer that we made. Um, we were going to get a 28-year-old um, pitcher, Curtis Avent, who's really a replacement-level type pitcher. Um, but he does um, have a nice personality, and he does have uh, two option years left. And he's also an iron man as far as his injury proneness so uh just kind of a nice guy to have in the system for the next couple of years who could potentially fill in for us as a fifth starter or a long reliever at the major league level if uh, we needed him to uh, we were also looking to get um manny trevino who's another minor league pitcher with a good personality durable could pitch a lot of innings for us um down in the lower levels of the minors if we needed him to um thought we had a chance with that trade but they're actually asking for us to add in some decent prospects so don't think um we are going to um do that but we are gonna shop uh Minho Choi again and just see if there's any kind of straight up options that we might be able to pull off. I'm hoping Minnesota still offers us a vent straight up for him and it looks like they will do that. Um, so we're just going to go ahead and do that. We're not going to get the extra minor leaguer but I like taking the money of Choi off of our books. Um, you can see that our available money is going to improve by 4.3 million and we may even be able to get them to retain a chunk if not all of event salary no, not all of it but we can get them to keep 60 percent of his salary help our financials even better so we're going to go ahead and ship choy to them for event go ahead and complete that trade and you can see now looking at our front office that um we've got a fair amount of money to play with uh probably won't be using it for free agents but certainly could use it to bring some talent onto this team as we get closer to the trade deadline given that uh we are in win now mode as we're starting to prepare to try to go for a three-peat in this 2036 season and we've made it to the start of spring training here on february 21st we have uh, 46 players in camp uh, the 40 men on our roster our 40-man roster and then six other spring training invitees so uh hoping to make it through the next month or so without too many injuries and uh get ready for the 2036 regular season And we've made it to the end of spring training here on Monday, March 24th, 2036. Only one um, injury of note right now, so it's been a uh, pretty healthy camp for the Royals. Uh, Willie Flores banged up a little bit day-to-day -day with knee tendonitis for about a week. Uh, we've still got four days, uh, I guess three days now until opening day. So I think it's probably unlikely that we will put him on the IL, but uh, probably means a little extra playing time for Eregeto Laziosi in the early days of the season if uh, Flores is a little bit banged up. Uh, you can see we've got 18 players on the team right now here at the end of camp, as well as 18 pitchers. So I'm going to focus now on figuring out how to get uh, 36 players down to 26. Also going to move back to the five-man rotation that we are actually going to be using in the regular season. Uh, so definitely have some decisions to make uh, as far as who's going to make the final roster for these Royals. I think it's going to be pretty easy to get to the 13 players we are going to take north from arizona to kansas city uh one decision was at catcher angelo bolden is our starter leo aguiar has been his uh backup and platoon mate uh starting against left-handers for the last several years uh he's been a solid major league player for us over the last three seasons very good catcher ability 
and over the course of his major league career he's been just about an average major league bat uh, we did make the trade in the offseason to bring Adam Fuchs into the organization, who has played one year in the majors at this point last year with Miami. Was a below-average offensive player, but um, also very solid defensively. Um, not quite as good in terms of his catcher ability as Aguiar is, but he's got a much better arm, really good personality, and a pretty similar bat. Um, we are going to send Fuchs down. Um, he does still have two option years left, but it's a real close call. They're both right-handed hitters, and although Aguiar is better in terms of his catcher ability, Fuchs is a little more well-balanced. Um, they're both durable. Um, Aguiar is expected to um, potentially make like $2.8 million next year, so there's a chance that we would move on from Aguiar after this season and uh, allow Fuchs to be on the major league roster, uh, but right now he's going to go down to AAA Omaha, where he will be uh, an excellent insurance policy for either Bolden or Aguiar. Moving on to our infield, uh, we've got Jonathan Ojeda at first, Willie Flores, although he's banged up at second, Bobby Witt Jr. at third, Tony Fonseca at short, Araghetto Laziosi as our utility guy, and Rich Alvarado as another utility guy, uh, which means that once again, Billy, Veninga, Billy Dominguez is going to be on the shuttle between Kansas City and Omaha. Uh, the issue, unfortunately, now is that Dominguez is out of option years, so um, we are going to have to wave and DFA him. Hopefully he will make it through, and um, we'll be able to have him down in AAA. Uh, he's been a pretty useful utility infielder for us over the last few years when um, we've had some of our players banged up. And given that Bobby Witt Jr., Araghetto Laziosi, and Willie Flores are all fragile at this point as far as their health, um, definitely hope that he makes it down to Omaha and we can have access to him this season for when someone inevitably gets banged up. And then the last cut is going to be Jorge LeBron, who uh, did an excellent job last year, hit 348 in his first 46 at-bats at the major league level. He did, however, only have 119 at-bats in AAA before he came up. Um, he's just not going to get a lot of playing time here with our great outfield where we have... Um, Vasquez in left, Velasquez in center, Avellar in right, and then McNeil and Javi Medina also in the lineup at DH and or um, you know platooning in some of those corner outfield spots. So I think it makes sense for the 23-year-old to get to play every day down in Omaha, uh, but certainly he will be the first player called up if we need an outfielder, and uh, would expect that he will be the uh, extra bat that we will add to the roster in September if everyone is healthy and the roster looks the same way as it does now. I think that uh, Jorge LeBron is probably up again for the month of September. And then honestly, when we're looking into the 2037 season, it's uh, very possible that we move on from one of these outfielders to make space for LeBron if he uh, develops as we hope he does. So, as I said, again, pretty easy to get down to the uh, 13 players who are going to be on the Major League roster. Uh, now we've got to figure out how to get uh, 18 pitchers down to 13 as well. All right, we've made a couple of cuts to get the pitching staff down to 16, and now it's getting a little trickier. Uh, you may remember we picked up the young uh, left-hander Juan Munoz in the Rule 5 draft with our second pick. I think he's going to be a pretty interesting pitcher, but you look at where he is right now with 40 movement and 35 control. Um, we are a team that is going for a three-peat this year, trying to win it all. He's only a one-star pitcher. He's just not nearly the quality of the other people on the team. So unfortunately, we are going to uh, release Munoz and send him back to the Angels, which will get the uh, pitching staff down to 15 pitchers. Still have two cuts left to go, however. 
And I kind of thought at the end of last season that Marco Estrada would start this year in AAA. You can see he has been our fifth starter. Um, he would be our fifth starter right now, and he was our fifth starter when we were going with a six-man rotation in spring training. But as I've thought about it more, he does have a little to develop as far as his stuff, his fastball, his curveball, and his forkball. But he put up a 2.8 war in half a season in AA and a 3.1 war last season in half a season in AAA. I just don't think he's got a lot left to prove in the minor leagues. So we are going to keep him up, and he is going to be our fifth starter. We'll see what uh, what he can do at the major league level. Um, and we're also going to keep up Dan Keough, who's another one of our young potential starting pitchers. Keough was up at the end of last season when he got banged around. Nine ERA, six home runs allowed, and 15 innings pitched. He only throws about 90 miles an hour, and his movement is not great. So there is definitely a worry that he's going to be giving up a lot of home runs. But um, we're going to give him a chance to see what he can do at, a ma at the major league level. So both of those guys are going to make the team, uh, which means we've got some interesting cuts ahead of us. So with us keeping up the youngsters and the 23-year-old Estrada and the 25-year-old Keo to see what those guys can do at the major league level, means that some veterans are probably headed to AAA. And our first cut is going to be Dylan Carter. Um, this one's tough. He was a 19th round draft pick of ours back in 2023. Finally made the majors last year as a 33-year-old. And he pitched pretty well, 3.92 ERA and 109 strikeouts over 85 innings pitched. Uh, he's kind of caught up in a numbers game right now. Um, and he does have three option years left. So... Um, we are going to send him down to AAA. Um, clearly, we'll probably need him at some point this year. But um, he is the uh, second to last cut among the pitchers. And now we've got an even more difficult decision ahead of us. And the final cut's going to come down to a couple of veterans. Um, one is left-hander Bryce Hubbard. Uh, been on three of our World Series teams and was also the AL Reliever of the Year back in 2034. Has had a nice career with us with a 123 ERA plus and an 88 FIP minus over the course of his career. The other option is another solid pitcher, uh, Bob Williams, who has also been on three of our championship teams, was an all-star back in 2033, and he's put up a 115 ERA plus and an 85 FIP minus for us over the course of his career. They both have one option year left, so they both can go down um, if we need them to. Um, we are going to end up going with four lefties out of the pen and four righties out of the pen. So that means for the time being, Williams is going to actually get caught up in the numbers game. And we're going to demote him to Omaha. So that will allow us to officially uh, set up the 26-man roster. Uh, Lagerwell, Borgman, Hillman, and Chevera back as our top four, same as last season. Uh, the big question is how much we're going to get out of Ben Borgman this year with a 80 pitch count. Can we keep him uh, healthy for most of the season and productive for when we hopefully get into the playoffs? And then the rookie Marco Estrada is going to be making his major league debut as the only left-hander in our rotation and our number five starter. Uh, new addition, the free agent acquisition Santiago Suarez is going to be our closer. Uh, another free agent acquisition, the lefty Gabe Porter is going to be our setup man. Jesus Mercado, who we picked up, uh, the 25-year-old, in a trade with Seattle when we uh, finally started to pair off um, some of our Corner outfielders um, sent Israel Gutierrez to Seattle to uh, pick up Mercado. He's going to be in the pen. Uh, Nomar Funky Cole Medina, who joined us last year, uh, picked him up uh, on the waiver wire when the Dodgers cut him right at the end of spring training back as a lefty in our bullpen. We also talked about Hubbard. And then Chris Rutledge is going to be another lefty out of the bullpen. Uh, picked him up in a trade with Miami at the beginning of the year. 
um, in that trade where we also got the catcher, Adam Fuchs. Um, big guy that we got rid of in that trade was another corner outfielder, Rodolfo Falcone. Um, so a lot of the bullpen help that we picked up for some of the outfielders that we traded during the offseason um, made the final roster here. Uh, Dan Keough, the 25-year-old uh, rookie we talked about, is in long relief. And then last but not least, least uh, Matt Thompson, who we did pick up in the Rule 5 draft this past year, uh, also going to make the roster, and we'll see what uh, he can do for us at the major league level. So that is the 26-man roster for the Royals. Uh, we will run a quick simulation to see what the numbers might look like. We'll obviously do the same thing at the start of the season and the start of our next episode. Um, but in this simulation, the Royals look like we're definitely going to be competing for the three-peat that we're going after. Had a 103-59 and record in this simulation, uh, the best record in the American League, and it was also the best record in baseball. Looks like uh, potential for Vasquez and Javi Medina and Jonathan Ojeda to have really big seasons. And uh, pitching-wise, at least through that sim, Caleb Lagerwell had a really nice season. 19-9 with a two-spot, 6-9 ERA in 240 and two-thirds innings. Uh, we would certainly take that type of season from him. So... Um, We'll see what happens, but the Royals right now have uh, about $15 million to potentially take on some contracts in the coming months to fill gaps in the roster if we have injuries or people who don't perform as well as expected. But uh, we're expecting another big year for the Royals here in 2036, and in our next episode, we are going to jump right in and begin the regular season. Until then, thanks so much for watching, and hope you have a great day.